in the school class, we've taken one argument called name, which is the name of the school, and it looks like we have a self.staff and a self.student, which is an empty array. I'm assuming this is where we're gonna store students and staff, but I'm not quite sure, we'll get to that. All right, we'll start by initializing our school with a name, feel free to add other attributes as well. Notice that school will be responsible for keeping track of students and staff, great. So since these will be large collections of objects, we'll use a list to hold them for now. So kind of remember when we were doing apple trees, how the, the apple tree had a list of apple objects. Does, that, does everyone kind of remember that? All right, that's kind of what we're gonna be doing here. For now, initial, we'll initialize with empty lists. Later on, we'll get our student records loaded right into the right class when we start our program. All right, let's create our student and staff classes. Using the headers and the corresponding CSV as a guide, we can see that what attributes make up. So it looks like we need to create a student file and a staff file. So let's go ahead and do that. LS, CD, school, clear. I'm um, gonna touch, was a uh, staff.py and student. The students or student? student.py. So I've got student and staff file right here, they're empty. I'm going to copy over the student class and the staff class. All right, that's a lot of repeated code. There's gotta be a better way to refactor this. Uh, it's not necessary for you to do this for this specific challenge, but let's go ahead and do it. All right, so, that's, so we want to, should we do it? Because we're gonna talk about inheritance today. Let's go ahead and do it. So all this code is kind of repeated. So it says, let's create a person class and move any shared attributes there. Then set up staff and school class so that they inherit from the person. All right, I'm gonna create a person.py. I'm gonna just copy this over. Where's the person? Oh, I'm an idiot, all right, cool. So class, person, So what is actually shared between these? Everything besides the ID and the role. Everything besides the ID and the role. Well, the role is the same name in there besides the shared. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Cool. All right, staff, so I've got the, oh wait. Did I delete the wrong one? So here's my person class. Let's delete the staff ID. I'm gonna separate that out. So let's talk a little bit about inheritance. Uh, we're gonna be covering that today. <clears throat> but to, for this class, for the students to inherit everything from I didn't say, oh, I messed it up. What happened? Uh, all right, I deleted my staff. It's not good. A person, age, name, role. Great. <clears throat> student, age, name, role, student ID. That's kind of weird. I think that's school ID. I'll take it from there. All right, that might work. Student staff. So in order first, let's deal with students first. So I want to have student inherit 
all these instances, all these attributes from person, because a student is a person, and a student, or and then a, a staff is also a person. So we've got all these shared attributes. So I'm going to import from person, import person, capital person. And in order for this student class to inherit attributes from the person class, I can do person. And then in this init, I pretty much still have to, so I can do, I don't know, like that. I can call the person, the person dot init. So I want to initialize all this init method from the person class. And I take in what, what do I need to take in? Everything but So I have to do self dot person. If you use super, you don't have to. But if you use person, I believe you can use self as well. Let's we'll try it right now. So the only thing that chain is different is the school ID. So let's just initialize a student new student equal student still has to take in all the uh, age 33 uh, role student school id one two three password excellence print new student school interface one ls some of the python student oh no Missing one argument, password. Did I not put in the password? So I've got name, age, role, school ID, password. Name, age, role, password, line five. Do I need to do that? No, because that, that's when it's just super. But I need, self you need self and three supers. <clears throat> Let's get back to the. It's not in here. Not no, in here? Not, we have it. to read it. I think that was the next thing. All right. It's not creating a new name. It's the will override the username. Clear. I'm going to, I just threw in self, see what happens. Oh, all right. So in order, if I call this person, I need to throw in self in there. So if I want to grab the password, because I know we had an error, I want to see what that looks like. I'm down here in the terminal, xx, which is good. So if I actually call the person dot init method, comes in here, I need to pass in self. I don't really like that. I want this to be scalable. So there's a thing called super, invoke it. Get rid of that. Clear. I'm going to come down here again. Same thing. So the super, I'm not quite sure specifically like what it does off the top of my head, but from a scalability perspective, <clears throat> this is, JavaScript essentially has the same thing. Um, it, grab, it grabs like the class that it's inheriting and all, and all the methods associated with this person class and puts them gives this class the student class access to them so instead of using person we can just use super so if any point in the future person changed a, a different class something else or if you build different methods in the person, yep. like if i wanted to change person class into something else i don't have to come in here and change it for wherever person is wherever person's methods are, are being used in the parent's class or in the child's class. All right, so that works. Let's do this with staff. 
same thing. So I'm gonna bring over, yep, I'm gonna bring over staff. I'm just kind of copy the syntax from person, import person. Let me delete this. We don't need that. Copy super over. Super, what do we don't no, need? We don't need that. Great. So refactor with dict and quarks. All right, I don't know what the hell that means. So we kind of talked about like, our, how do we have, how do we write a method that can accept an unlimited amount of arguments by doing the star, star the star args, the star args. But there's also, we can accept keyword arguments of quarks. So, so it can accept a dictionary. <clears throat> So I want to change my person to be able to accept a dictionary. So I can do dot dot person info. Now, how do I assign each? I can do can I do like person info info dot name. Person info dot age. Person info uh, password role person info. <clears throat> Let's check this out. I'm going to create a. Uh, now I got to actually create a dictionary. Uh, person info personal information equals a dictionary that has name. Tom, age, three, uh, what is it, what else I need, role, uh, student, and password, xx. <clears throat> now let's just test this, I'm going to create a new person, new person equals person then do I just pass in personal info personal information and I'm gonna print the new person so this way we're not having to type in all this stuff like it used to be all in the same order yeah, like half like if you write it this way all the arguments have to be passed in in the same order for it to actually work. So it's clear. Python person. Uh oh. The two were given. Commit self. Do I have to create this? Does this work? There we go. <clears throat> so you can pass in the personal information, which is a dictionary, and make it quarks, like do the two stars in front of it. And now it knows it's a keyword argument, it matches everything up. <clears throat> but this is still kind of a lot of information. I want to make that even tighter. I want less code. But this is easier for the developer to see that, oh, these are the type of parameters. I'm going to show you another thing. <clears throat> uh, what if I do dir new person? So Stephen's saying if I do call the dir new person, it's going to show me everything within this new person object, like that's available to it. <clears throat> all the, so this should show me all the methods available to me within this class. So I've got, these are all the methods available to this person object. I've got class, delete r, dict, dir, 
e format, reduce X, I, I don't know what any of these mean. <clears throat> but what if I want to know this little under, under uh, is it dunder dick? I want to print that. I want to print this. So the dict is all the attributes in the dictionary for this. But what if I deleted that and do self dot under dict dot update personal info clear. I'm going to do personal info. Hopefully it still works. Personal info object, personal info password or name, name. Got Tom. What if I wanted to call that dick again? Everything's the same. So I'm updating the, the dictionary, the self.dictionary, with all my personal info. It's a way to keep it a sh little shorter, one-liner codes, but as developers, we want to make it easier for other developers to know what is involved in this person attribute. Let's go into the student. Let's make this one blogs related. The student info, is that right? And then in here, I want to pass in the student info again, which is essentially calling the student info, passing it into here as the person info, and assigning that stuff. School ID. Is that student info uh, uh, school ID I think that might work let's try it out I'm gonna copy this over to here to see the person info for this student but in addition this might not work I think right now this might not work the way I want it. New person, new student. School student info. So right here, school ID. In your person. Oh, that's what I'm missing. Cool. School ID uh, one, two, three. If I shouldn't need it up there. Let's run this. So, I'm calling student, I'm passing in this personal information that has all the personal information that is needed for the person class in addition to the school ID. Comes into here. Keyword arguments passes in student info as a keyword argument into the super init, which comes over here to the person, fills out all this. In addition to, I'm able to access the student info school ID here. Hopefully it works. It's all about hope. All right, nothing happened. What happened? Oh, to that Python student. Great. So I've got everything working so far. Let's do that the same thing with the staff. Call it staff info. Staff info. Staff. So do you, in the init statement, do you not need to enter in the ID there as well? Or no? Line six, where am I looking at right here? Or line four, I was gonna say. Yeah, you don't need to do that in here because you're passing everything in a dictionary like this that has the school ID in it. 
And then in here, it's, so all this stuff is it's personal information dictionaries passed in here. It's also being passed in here. But when I get to the person info, the only thing that's being extracted are the name, age, passive role. But down here, this is where I'm extracting the student, the school ID from it. Yeah, so if I do like grade A12, I'm going to print everything. Uh, this is student info dot grade. See, there's no grade attribute because it's not being used anywhere. So it's not a, it's not actually using this data because we don't want it. We're only extracting the data from the dictionary that we want to use. Well, there are questions regarding. Isn't that um, student info the information that you use first info as well? Like that? Yeah. Yeah, so that doesn't matter, but you have to just rename. Yeah. Okay. You can call that whatever you want. But since we want to. Name from a naming convention, you want to name variables and arguments as close to what the actual data is going to be, like what it's what the type of data. Is. So you're just making whatever that is be uh, the personal info as well. Yes. So that's staff info, staff. Great. So we don't need this. Don't need that. I'm just going to comment this out just in case we need to use it again in the future. All right. So release one, refactor, cool, we refactor the inf to make it less, more scalable and less error prone. Here's some examples of how that works. So the, before the student turns it into this, turns that into essentially you're passing in, this is what you're passing in into that variable when you pre uh, prepend the two uh, stars in front of it. Keyword, key, word argument. Next, move classes into class folder. As we scale, we wanna keep our application organized. So best practices is to separate specific Methods, functions, classes, modules, uh, database files into their own directories. So let's refactor. So we've got this data directory. Now we want our classes directory. We're going to move all these classes into a cla our classes directory. So clear, make directory, the classes. I'm gonna come over here. Here's our classes, stool, person. I'm gonna move all those. So, one thing I noticed when you're doing it via console is the way that it moves things is it basically touches new file, the same name, copies things over. <laughs> so I've noticed you lose your file that you get in the tab. Oh, it just say delete. It says so delete it. How to move it. Yeah. So. <laughs> Dan was pointing out, like, if you use the move, uh, the MV, the move uh, command, and then move all your uh, class files into a class's directory, it will actually delete the existing student, like, student py file and create a copy of it and then place it into the classes. So just be wary of that. Um, I just moved it here because it's easier for me right now. Yeah. Yeah, I did not know that the move command deletes and then or makes a copy and deletes it. So let's look at our directory of classes, our student, Python, great, the data, we have a runner. Let's run our runner file. I just want to see if this works. Python runner. Oh no, school, import school, no module name school. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Cool. I'm actually gonna, I guess I'll just keep going through like the release. 
The next thing we need to do is load our data from the CSV using Python CSV module, if you have done so already. Great. Well, I just want to, this is annoying. Like, I want to be running everything from the runner. I can't, I don't know what's going on. Just look through that. Uh, cool, looking through the thing. Okay. I see that the runner has classes.school. So from right now, from school, it's trying to look in this directory, the current working directory I'm in. It's not finding a school file. So that's why it's throwing an error. No module named school. So I need to go into the classes folder first and then grab school. So I need to reprint the directory name, classes to school. Clear. All right, that works. Now release two loading the data so write a method all students that returns an array of student objects that represent each row in the cs students.csv file so student.all students should return an array of student objects cool hint you'll need to import os path using the os path absolute path as well as os path.join to read from the csv file Okay, so where should this method go? This student, this all students method. Anywhere? So I see in here, we have this init file in our school. So it looks like students, so within the students class, this is where we wanna grab. See that's all right, I see an error, students, it should be student. So in here, this is where we should write our, uh, this is where we should write our all students method. So def all students self and within here, this is where I'm going to read from the CSV file, grab it, essentially create brand new student instances and in put them in an array. All right. Why are you creating it in the version? So the all students method. So what's the objective of the all students method? Uh, to grab all the CSV files and put it into the students array. So the all students, correct, is supposed to read from the CSV file. Or oh, I see you are doing, I thought you were doing it in the first Oh, so okay, all right, yeah, no good. Yep, so we're doing this in the student file. So in the notes, we're gonna need I'm going to copy this over, import person. So my path, I'm going to print this. I don't know what my path looks like. It's just like code I copied over, not quite sure what it is. And I'm also going to print path. I'm going to pass this. I'm just going to invoke, I'm going to run Python. So I need to go into my classes run the Python student. Oh, class student person indentation expected indented block. What? Oh, see there. Clear. Uh oh. Oh, OS is not defined. All right. Go so import OS, stands for operating system. Bank. Run that again. All right, this print my path is literally the path from the, my root directory, users, TA creep, desktop, kilo challenges, school interface one, classes, or that path to the students, essentially just, yes? Uh, it's a question with importing OS, because you can import OS.path. 
Oh, uh, like that? Yeah, that's how it Let's try that. Um, if that works, I would probably do lowest path. So it's just loading less? less. Yeah, it's just loading less uh, stuff associated with the OS. I think the like, OS import path. I think you don't even need to put OS in there. So I don't know. Like, you just do path. So Dan was saying, what's better to import the entire OS module or just all the methods associated with the OS path? Uh, I'd probably just do the OS path because it's less, you're loading less things. But I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's minuscule. So, so this user classes, so this path is the at that the path to this data.students CSV. Cool. So in this all students method, I need to create an array. It returns an array of student objects, student class objects. So in here, I'm just going to create students array equals an empty array and I see right here this is the with open that we use for the CSV file so it looks like it just takes the path to where the student CSV file so student the path OS join my path students that CSV takes that path which is this and puts it here which is the path to my data just do I'm also, good catch, I'm also going to have to import the CSV module as well because I'm using CSV. So how do, I, how do we import before? We imported, uh, we can import an array using just reader, but we're passing in everything using a keyword argument, like a dictionary. So I'm gonna use dictator. So student, uh, I'm gonna change the CSV file to student uh, file. So student uh, reader equals CSV dict reader student file. So I'm passing in the student file which is in fact the actual student's CSV file into the dict reader. I'm just gonna print, uh, or what is it, for row and student reader, print row. And since, is my runner file working? Unless, I'm gonna clear down here. I'm gonna run the runner file. Python runner. Oh crap. Expected to indent line two school. The school at. I'm gonna comment this out. So from classes school import school. Uh, oh, I see. So expected an indent. Let's run that again. Name student is not defined. So line three in the runner. So school is not importing anything. So from student import student I have to do staff staff okay I clear it oh no so class of school import from student no module named student 
So the reason why this is happening is because I'm running from the runner file and everything essentially has to be from like an import perspective. I like to think of it as everywhere else in the file where I'm importing stuff has to look like I'm importing it from the runner file. So classes dot student classes dot staff. Now if I was running just the the school file, I wouldn't need the classes, but since I'm running it from the runner file, which is one directory above, I need to use the school or the, the classes. Hopefully that's it. Maybe we'll get another error. Cool. Well, it's a different error. Import school from classes student import. All right. So is it from here? So student, so is it classes? All right, let's try that. All right, so now we gotta look at staff. This is why one error at a time. All right, cool. All students missing one required argument, self. So, for whatever reason, putting self in that platform. Uh, so, I'm going to put self here. So, I'm going to see because right here it says in the school line seven, all students missing one required positional argument, self. All right. So, I'm going to see that. Maybe that'll work. All right. Cool. We kind of got something and we got an error. Whatever. Oh. Uh, We'll deal with that. I'm going to comment that out because it's the type objects, all staff. That means all staff does not have a method yet. That's fine. I'm just going to comment that out. Good question, Michael. Um, you're just going one directory down, so there was another directory inside the class and you just got it again. So if there's another directory like, within, within here? Within the classes, if there was another, like, let's say, another when you're importing in this import dot I think that's how it's going, but you'll directories will rarely be like another. another level where you have to access it. So um, uh, yes. real quick. I was just wondering why you need to add the positional argument of self into those yeah, right in there. I've just never experienced that before. <laughs> So yeah. you don't even need it in here. All students method. You can remove self from there completely and then not need it for starting it. Maybe I'll actually get your array of objects that you want to need. So Dan was saying you don't even need yourself into here. Because are we even accessing anything in our uh, from our init file? Like are we accessing anything, any instance variables in our all students? School ID. No, no, you could. It's all getting. No, so we're only accessing. So what if I move, remove self from there and self from there? Will it still work? All right. There you go. So what is this called? What kind of method is this called? Stat. Stat. It's like a class method, a static method. There is a. Yeah, is it decorator? Is that the. So if you, I think that's what it's called. Let me look real quick. Oh yeah, so it's a class method. So what this means is that like, you're not, it's only, it's not only at, you know, this, this at class method is just a visual indicator to the developer that this is in fact just a class method. You're not doing anything with instance variables in here. You're just calling the class and then the variable. So you don't really need self because you're not accessing any instance variables within. You can also use the um, class method if you put the function right behind it. You can actually call the function to the next one. And if you like the function, it's Uh oh. One was given. Where does that say? Oh. 
Uh, do you need to sell? Wasn't it we're just working before? Oh, that actually, oh, okay. I did not know that. Ah. Yeah, there's multiple ways to do this. I'm just gonna keep it like this. I should put self, self in here. So if you just do static, well, hold on. Yeah, if you do static, you add static method. Add static method? Yeah. Here. All right. The static method. All right, cool. So if you do add static method, we don't need the self. There's multiple ways to do it, or you can just do self in here. And then maybe in the future, you want to access the instance variables within there, but it, it means that this method is just what is it? Yeah. You don't need an instance. Yeah. There's no reason to ever need an instance of that. It's just using the same. So Dan was saying the static method uh, is an indicator that you never need an instance of this all students. So you don't need to create a student like Tom equals student and then call Tom dot all students. Uh, you're only accessing all students from the school class. Well, it almost makes more sense that that should be a school. Yeah, I, like there's most, like I think the first time I did it, the all students, I moved this into the school method, but this is one way to do it. So we got all our students from the dictionary. You gotta load it into that array. So now, so this is just a dict order dict. This isn't an instance of a student. So what I'm going to do is student reader for a row in student reader reader. Oh, yep. I can create a, essentially a new student method or a new student instance. So student, I'm going to actually call it student array. Just call it student, you think? I call it students plural. Uh, yeah, I'm just new student equal student, and then since it's a dictionary, we want to convert the dictionary into a keyword argument, so we can do row. We can even call it student info, so that's really what it is. Let's print new student. Clear. Uh, school name. So we should expect a bunch of student objects like this. Main student object. Cool. So now we got classes student level. Now we need to student array dot append right. new student. At the very end, we want to return students. Oh, I see what's going on. Students array. Let's run that. Clear. Richmond High. But now if we go on the we also want to print school comes into here self dot students executes student dot all students comes into this all students method the static method within the student py creates a variable which is just an empty array which is where we access the csv file using this new path which is the absolute path to where the students CSV files located at, loops through, grabs the student info as a dictionary. So we create a new student instance, passing in it the student info 
using keyword arguments, assigning it to new student, and then we append the new student to the student array, and we return that array. So that array should equal essentially an array of all students, a bunch of students. So if we are in here, we access the school.students. We should see the school name followed by a bunch of students. Cool. Now, if I wanted to loop through just in this runner file for a student in school.students, print student.name. Does that work? Will that print all the names of all the students? No, why not? Object has no attribute name. School object has no attribute. For student in school students. Thank you. There we go. Richmond High, Lisa, Jesse, Slater. Any questions so far on loading students? How many, did people just grab all the data from this, the file and just load it into an array instead of creating instances of it? Yeah, I, I, had to, I did that the first time I did it. Well, online level of student is usually what that static method is. So just, this informs the user and makes this all students method like it's only the only use of this method is uh, as a class method not an instance method so before when we want to run the linter actually can you highlight over static method yeah let's kind of tell you so it can be called either on the class or on an instance okay so it could be called on the class or an instance uh, the instance is ignored except for its class so you'll never be like Tom equals like a new student. Tom equals student. And you pass in the, the personal information. <coughs> And then you, you'll never call Tom all students. Because that's like an, we're calling this method on an instance. Whereas you don't want, that's not the purpose of this method. And you're also not using any instance variables in this method. You're not calling self school ID, self name, self whatever. But in school, we're calling the class student dot all students. Now you can just make this work by making it a, but then you'd have to pass in self in here. Uh, I think in the, is it decorator or what did I call it before? Oh, I think I said class method. So class method, converts a function to be a class method. Then I also have to put in self there, I think. There. So there's multiple ways that we can do this. I just want to see, make sure everything works. So I change it to a class method instead of a static method. Cool. Everything still works. What questions do you have about how we loaded the, all the students, how we access we read the CS student CSV file, created a student instance of it, passing in a student dictionary of all the info, converted to keyword arguments, added to new students, and then added it to the array. My solution is slightly different. I don't want to get into details, but I'm more concerned assessment-wise. Um, I got. I'm going to stop the recording right there. No problem.